Joining us now is Gerard Cassidy from RBC. Gerard, it's always great to, to speak with you. Why is now the time to be buying bank stocks? Well, Morgan, when you take a look at past tightening cycles, what we have seen is that when the Fed reaches the terminal rate for Fed funds, it's been a catalyst for the stocks to outperform the general markets. And so possibly the July rate increase is likely to be the last Fed funds rate increase. So if we go into the first part of 2024 and it becomes more clear that the Fed is not going to be raising short-term interest rates, then we're, we're at that point where the stocks should and have started to outperform. As you know, from the October lows, the banks are up anywhere from 33 to 35% depending on the indice. So the stocks have bounced real well off those lows. But as you pointed out, the full year numbers, however, they underperformed. Yeah. So do you buy big banks or do you buy regionals? It's an interesting question because the rising tide will lift all ships for the banks. Um, when you compare this period, we have a couple of comparison time frames that we can look at. If you go back to 94, 95 or 04 to 06 in those two tightening periods, it, all the stocks did well in 95 and in 2006. The key question will be about credit. But whether you buy a large cap or a regional bank, I would say that money center banks are certainly viable, such as Bank America. We want risk on. Risk off worked very well in 2023. JP Morgan, of course, is the classic risk off big bank name, and it was up over 25% this year. And when you look at next year, though, if we have the soft landing, the Fed has finished raising rates, we want to take more risk. So names like Bank America would work, but also the regional banks, names like Fifth Third or Regions, Key Corp, all of those names could work in, in an environment where it's risk on. Okay. Uh, I mean, the banks, the big banks, are going to kick off the next round of earnings season in just about two weeks, give or take. In light of this conversation, what are the metrics that investors need to focus on? Is it going to be things like net interest margin and net interest income? Or, and I think about this coming off of 2023, where part of what triggered runs on some of these banks like SBB, is it going to be the mark-to-market -market accounting and unrealized losses in the investment portfolios? Morgan, you touched on all the key points. In fact, we've uh, written our fourth quarter preview, which will be released on January 2nd. And what we talked about is very much what you just brought up, the fourth quarter discussion that we're going to hear from the banks, and it kicks off with the, large, uh, the largest banks reporting, J.P. Morgan, Wells, City on the um, January 12th. Um, but what we're going to hear and more talk about is margin pressure. We expect that to continue this quarter. But we also expect to hear from the banks that the margins should inflect and net interest revenue growth should inflect probably between the fourth quarter of this year and the second quarter of next year. We're also going to hear about the unrealized bond losses that you just brought up. That was a big issue throughout the year. But with the bond market doing what it has done since October, as you recall, when it hit about 5% in the 10-year, we're now down to about 3.85%. So the unrealized bond losses, of course, will shrink, and there will be more relief there. The real key discussion point, though, will be the outlook for credit quality. That is what everybody's going to want to hear about. And credit, we expect, in the fourth quarter will have remained pretty benign.